So welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Alfa Ribeiro, and we, today we're going to be talking about mastering online sessions. For those of you who have already been on a course with me, you know that I love this topic. It was one of the reasons that I was able to keep my sanity when the world turned to remote working, exploring the, the gadgets, the devices, the applications, um, targeting online meeting hosting and presentations. And over the course of, of three years, I have been actually experimenting a lot with, with all of this. So today I'm going to share a little bit of my, let's say, insights, also backed by experience. I have hosted over 1,800 hours of online meetings. I was even blown away when I was doing the math. Three years can, can be a, a lot of time for, for online hosting, especially these last three. So let's see. I'm, I'm eager to also hear from you. What are your experiences on, on this topic? So let's dig right in. All right, so you already have the Slido working. The agenda for today, uh, I'm going to start with, with why. I'm a fan of Simon Sinek, Golden Circle. So why improve online meetings? Then we're going to cover briefly the three pillars or my three main mistakes over the course of these three years. And those mistakes I also observed in, in the people I help either through coaching or by teaching, agile coaching or agile facilitation. Normally, the people I teach nowadays are doing this remotely, online, so it's really easy to spot those mistakes. Call them the three Ps, three pillars. And also going to provide some tips for the three of them. Then, being fully transparent, I'm going to provide an early preview about the e-course going deeper on this topic, mastering online meetings, and at the end, a Q&A session. All right. So full disclosure, as you probably already know, online meetings are not a perfect environment. We depend on a lot of technology and technology sometimes fail. I even had to buy uh, an interrupted power supply here because once I was giving a training by myself and my electricity went out. And then the people in the call were just left there wondering what happened. So at least if my power runs out, I'm going to probably be able to stay with you for at least five minutes. Okay, and then probably need to, to bolt. So just to say that whatever happens in this call, even with all the planning and all the preparation, I don't really know if it's going to go well until the end. I don't know if my daughters are going to jump on my lap, press the keyboard and just kick everyone out of the, the meeting room. It, it happened before. So I'm just letting you know that we are going through uncharted territory because every online meeting can be an uncharted territory because of the dependency on the tech. Having said that, why? Why do we need to improve online meetings? Well, I believe that we are still living in a pandemic. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you again. And it's a pandemic of online meetings. I don't know if you all feel the same, but my experience and the people I talk to, they are back to back on meetings much more than before. And there is a simple, simple reason in my perspective for this to happen. Well, before 
in my time before COVID, if we wanted to book a meeting, we would have to first see if not only the participants were available, but if the physical rooms were available. So now we are not limited by the number of physical rooms available. Everyone at any point in time, even at multiple times at once, can create an online meeting. You can literally be in an infinite number of online meetings at the same time. As long as your computer can, can withstand all those applications open, you can be omnipresent. And this, for me, has created this avalanche of online meetings. There are no more fights on, on the entrance of um, meeting rooms to actually get the room. No, I booked it before. No, it was me. No, but this meeting is more important. No, no worries. In the online world, everyone can have a meeting. Almost feels like Oprah giving away meeting rooms to everybody. You have a meeting room. You have a meeting room. Just everyone gets a meeting room. Now, just to give some stats and another moment where I was literally blown away, almost fell from my chair. As of 2023, Zoom has every year 8 trillion minutes of meeting. 3 trillion, sorry, 3 trillion minutes of meetings a year. Roughly 8 billion a day. M math is not my, my forte, so that account may, may be wrong, but bear with me. There are 300 million users daily, and 89% of them use for business meetings. I don't know about you, but these numbers scare me. Because, well, at least from my experience, I don't know about you, these are the faces of the participants of most of the online meetings I attended to. I don't know if you identify yourself with any of them, but this is what I see. I call it online meeting torture. And hey, life is hard as it is. Do we really need to put people through online meeting torture on top of all this? I don't think so. So why this happen? Well, maybe people are just tired. Too much stuff happening. Times may be challenging. There's a lot of things going on in the world right now that may put people under stress. Well, I, I have two daughters. That enough is stress material for a day. Or people may have tech problems. Who knows? Maybe the reason can be that the meeting is purely boring. And this is why I feel that we have so much room to improve, I would even say, people's lives. Because based on the time they spend through online meetings, I reckon we can do a better job. Now, let, let's see if I am the only one that actually feels like this. Please answer on Slido. How many of the meetings you attended in the past were either boring, tedious, conflictive, nonsense, or a complete waste of time? None of them? All of them? The majority? Let's see. So 50% almost taking the lead. 25% still winning. Oops. Getting close. Took the lead. 48%. And of course, this is a subjective interpretation, okay? I'm just trying to explore if people feel the same pain as me. So from the 24 people that voted, 
50% of your meetings were either boring, tedious, conflictive, nonsense, there is a lot to improve, that's for sure. You can keep voting if you like to. I'm just going to check a little bit of the chat if there is anything that you'd like to, to hear from. Thank you for sharing where you're from. Thank you for your message, Giovanni. Anyone who would like to share something about this, this kind of perspective or, or state of the online world, how is your hope for the, for the future of online meetings? If anyone would like to vocalize anything. Sure, I'll, I'll chuck something in there. One of the things that, that comes up for me is a lot of organizations went from pre-pandemic into pandemic and into online meetings with no consideration as to how they might work. So the old paradigms remain, but now we're doing it online. So you can't have a conversation with someone in a corridor. You can't just stop by someone's desk and say, have you got five minutes? You can't have a, a very quick breakout. Everything, absolutely everything has to go into diaries and everything has to have at least half an hour for it. And mm -hmm. that lack of consideration for me is one of the big reasons why we're, we're, we're seeing what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel you, Chris. Thank you for, for your feedback. I also understand that because of the nature of this transformation that wasn't planned or, or even uh, had the necessary time to actually unfold, uh, we had to learn as we go. Three years have passed and I still think that we haven't stopped to, as an as a overall, uh, let's say, endeavor to say, okay, what do we actually need to change? Thank you for that. Manon. Thanks. Nice um, yes, nice to see you. Um, so for us, when we went, were sent home, um, A, our technology couldn't compete with the, the number of people all of a sudden, VPN and, and uh, everything else. Um, so that was a challenge, but it was something that the organization needed to because our organization, think of it as a very large boat. And mm -hmm. we didn't move fast enough in the or in competitive world. So by embracing the fact that people had to get their head around managing their own technologies, doing things, it, it did actually help our organization. Online, I find that um, actually, I would say the majority of people are more in favor of being online than back mm. in the US. But um, it is definitely something that we're still learning as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for the input, Manon. I'm a, a huge fan of, of the online working. I also like to socialize. I like to provide in-person trainings and, and workshops. Uh, nevertheless, the online perspective gave me the opportunity to actually see my, my second daughter, for example, um, grow ever since she was, she was born. Uh, I get to spend more time with, with her and my also older daughter, with my wife also walk the dog in, or over a meeting break. So there's a lot of positives uh, over, I would say, both formats. There are pros and cons on each. Now, what I'm hoping to, to share with you all here would be simple and basic tips to actually, without even sometimes spending any money, really change the way your participants experience the meetings you host. Okay? And that would be my main goal for, for this, this short webinar, okay? All right, so let's get back to what would be the three pillars of, of online hosting in my perspective. Now, first I want, to, I want to ask a question. What is more important during an online meeting, audio or video? Please write on the chat what do you think it is, one or the other. Also going to read some messages while you do it. 
Clara saying that it's hard to keep focus in larger meetings going on for hours. Nice to see you all so again, Clara. Karen Lewis saying plenty of business meetings are based on face-to-face -face collaboration, games for retrospectives. We find it difficult to do those meetings effectively via Zoom. Thank you for that also. So a lot of people going for video, some for audio, some for both. That was not an option, people. You have to choose one. Think it like a backlog. What is going to be your number one item? No two number ones. Video, video, audio, both, video, video. All right, let's do a test. I'm going to showcase the two comparisons or say are the two options contrasting with each other let's see if your opinion changes now here you're probably seeing me with a really good video but a really really crap audio give me a thumbs up if this is what you're experiencing good video and really crap audio this would be half a online host number one now, now, you see me with a really crap video, or not, uh, not so good video. It's not that bad. It's slightly off. Um, but anyway, you have a much more profound and deep and clean audio experience. Give me a thumbs up if this is also what you're experiencing now. Okay, so comparing between good video and crap audio, or not so good video and good audio answer now in the chat which one would you prefer to be hosted by thank you for the uh, honesty jude changed your mind <laughs> There is a scientific reason why good audio is much more impactful than good video. Despite a lot of our brain power being used on visual processing, we still process emotions and um, let's say even the sequence of events much more with audio. So if you are, for example, explaining something to your participants, or if you are presenting a message, or if you're trying to convey either a feeling or an idea, better audio will lead to better understanding. You can even close your eyes right now, and if I continue talking with you on a clean audio stream, you will still ideally and hopefully keep your attention on me this is why we have podcasts do you see people talking do you visually need to see them talking to understand their message probably the video or the or the image would increase your insights or your learning but it's not mandatory so in my experience audio trumps video and you can for free or really cheaply improve your audio quality by having a dedicated microphone like this one I'm having. Improving your video, even the cheapest web cameras will be much more expensive than a really good microphone. So one way to improve your participant experiences is to actually improve the audio you give them. Now, moving forward. Someone said something in the chat that I found it funny. Let's play a game. Who is the host? Post it on the chat. Which number do you feel is the host of this meeting?
All right. So by the overall reply so far, number four is winning. Anyone would like to share what makes them think number four is the host? Anyone? I, Karen. I think, yeah, hi. I think in number hello, four, hello. Um, the, uh, your, you yourself are the center of attention in the picture and background in number two, there's too much background, which is distracting. Um, comparing number four to number five, the camera is looking up your nose rather than looking at you face on. So that, that's why I chose four. Thank you, Karen. And you and everyone else who posted number four are right. Because the way you present yourself tells a lot about you, even if you're unaware of that. Because impressions matter. And your visual presence shows your participants that you want to be there, that you care about them, that you are engaged, and that you respect them. When, for example, you have the camera below your eye level, subconsciously, this shows an image of someone above someone else. This can bring ideas of authority, hierarchy, or pretty much, I tell you what you should be doing. In the kinds of meetings that we want to facilitate, where we want to engage people and show that we respect them or that we are all at the same level, Adjusting your camera angle will do the trick. So fix your camera angle. You don't need to, to spend money on it sometimes. In the beginning of the pandemic, I just got some old shoe boxes and increased the height of my laptop just to have the camera at an even level. And this is what you see on post number four. Camera slightly above eye level. So this brings the first pillar that I wanted to talk about, which is look and sound professional. When I started working, you had a different image when you would go to work. And I'm not saying that you need to wear a suit, but I believe just because what we were talking before, Chris, we were thrown into this change and we didn't even have time to look and check how am I presenting myself online? How am I presenting myself online? How am I sounding online? You may have the most beautiful and present voice that is known to, to humanity, but if your microphone is not able to capture that, you're gonna lose this depth and impact to your participants. I'm seeing a lot of questions coming up on the chat. On Slido, you have a Q&A section you can post your questions there and i'm going to get to them right at the at the end thank you for that because we have to move on to pillar number two tell me why can't you smell your perfume after 10 minutes this can be your own perfume or someone else's perfume nose blind what does that mean chris what does that mean uh nose blind it's Exactly as uh, Nera says, uh, you get used to it. It becomes a background yes. element. It's something you don't see, you're not conscious of. Exactly. Now imagine I'm hosting this webinar and I'm talking like this in this very, very same tone. And I keep doing this for the entirety of this webinar, which is 45 minutes. I don't know how many people are going to be awake at the end of or even at the middle of this webinar and you will be surprised how many times i go into a meeting and the host is talking like this doesn't matter exactly what the section or the phase is it's even tiresome for me to actually be on this same tone because naturally i'm not like that all right is, is there anyone still awake yeah okay 
your brain gets saturated, not only with smell, but with the same stimulus. So what do we do? What happens when you saturate your audience? Well, they disconnect. Because your participants need different stimulus. And they need... Different variations of stimulus. Maybe you need to add something... That would just jolt them out of their chair. You can engage into a lot of fan fancy or childish stuff. After a while. But you don't need to go over the top. Because... What is the most accessible tool to create variation that you have? Your voice, exactly, Michaela, Stephen, and Chris. I thought I, I think this is what you were implying. Your voice, exactly. Your voice, and this is something that you can practice, that you can learn to. Ultimately, what you want to convey is entertaining your meeting and your audience will get them more interest in whatever you are saying or doing. Now, you can try this, but if you have a really, really crappy microphone or background noise, this is going to get difficult also. It's possible, but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. So, I believe that online hosting, it's the same thing as hosting a TV show. If it's not engaging, people will change the channel. So ask yourself this question. How are you adapting your voice based on the energy of the group? Maybe they are super energetic and you need to bring them down a little bit. Or maybe they are just low on energy. And you need to welcome and say, hey group, let's go back to the next exercise. What about the moment of the session? It is a brainstorm moment or a reflection moment. Maybe you need to tone it down and bring some more pauses to what you're saying. And what about the intention of the activity? Are you adapting your voice based on this intent? This doesn't cost any money. It is basically looking at your plan or your agenda and say, okay, what is the need right now? What is the energy I need to bring and how can I use my voice to do that? You can also use your visual stimulus, but visual stimulus may be interpreted by different meanings. Your voice, as we said earlier, audio trumps video. I may be really energetic with my arms, but if I have a really low voice, this is probably what you're going to process. So pillar number two, online hosting for me is a performative act. Now, even with the first two pillars, let's say you improved your video and your audio, you added that performative act to your presentation, and I'm not talking about being a clown, I'm just talking about adding more story or intent to your voice, people may still disengage. What is missing in this photo? What is missing from this participant? What do you think it is? Place it on the chat if you don't want to talk about it. So we have eye contact, content collaboration, interactions, connection, content. Only one person is doing anything. Engagement, his own screen side. You can see the board. There's a lot of, of not recommended stuff happening in this call for sure. But my point is, people are not actually doing anything. They are just listening. And if they are just listening, it means that their brain will probably say, hey, why don't you start doing something else? Why don't you think about the food you forgot to take out from the fridge? What's for lunch today? Or has anyone texted me yet? People will naturally find something else to do. So before that, give them something to do. And I mentioned 
in the in the article I wrote recently, my go solution for lack of engagement, dominant voices, creative blocks, or even my need of a break for biological reasons, or if I need to re-strategize the session I'm hosting, which is send people to breakout rooms. If you want engagement, engage with people. Stop talking, stop doing stuff, and just send people to their breakout rooms. Now, I don't know why, I don't know if I'm able to, but I think breakout rooms are not working for now. So ideally, in this moment, as, as I said, technologically may fail, I would send you to a breakout room even for just two or three minutes in pairs. And hopefully you will be able to talk with each other about what are you thinking about those three pillars. But hey, technology is not helping me. And this is why you need to also take it to this account. Anyone who has experience with breakout rooms or started using them recently and saw a change in the engagement of the audience who would like to share something. Like to hear from any of you. Al, nice to see you again. Yeah, hi. Uh, so I think the one of the big benefits I've seen in using breakout rooms is that uh, it gives a voice to the quieter ones. Um, and so they're happier talking in their pairs oftentimes, and then we'll come back to the group and, and relay what they've talked about more openly than what they would otherwise. Definitely. This can be a, a, a way to deal with dominant voices also, not only the quiet ones. If you have someone taking over your session and you don't know what to do and you don't want to be unpolite with them, you can go like, hey, great conversation. Let's now split into breakout rooms where each pair will have a conversation about the pros and cons of this idea. Done. You don't have to do anything else. People will move to their breakout rooms. If you want, you can still, you can put the two dominant voices in the same pair to also give room for the other people to talk with each other. And this, you engaged the quiet voices, you did not shut down the dominant ones, and you actually changed the dynamic of the session. Thank you, Al. Barry. Um, yeah, I've just got to, uh, I'll repeat just exactly what, what you said. That's exactly what I found. Um, it uh, definitely helped. Uh, uh, bringing people out, uh, people switching the cameras on as well was uh, uh, it was quite incredible. Uh, actually, um, everybody was laughing when they came back. Mm. All the faces were there, and I, I was like, "Wow, I caught you all out!" You finally put your cameras on, and uh, but yeah, definitely helping the uh, helping the quiet ones speak out. They they really do. And I've just I've just finished a retrospective where that where that happened. I know, yeah. and uh, yeah, that, that that was the benefit. Thank you, thank you, Barry. So I saw I saw a, a, a message uh, about the the cons of people starting to cheat chatting and actually doing the proposal discussion. One way to tackle that is to let them know that when they come back from the breakout room, each group is going to present the summary of their conversation. Now, if people don't want to present or they don't want to work at all, it is not because of the structure of the session didn't allow them to. Maybe they have too much on their plate right now. We are not also into forcing people to do stuff, but the part that we control, which is the structure of our session, we can do the most out of it. Not opening the breakout rooms because some people may not have a conversation is also um, jeopardizing the rest of the participants because of two people. So I'm a big favor of open the breakout rooms. Hopefully you will get more engagement. And, and my experience have been that the ones that do not talk in a breakout room are, are just the, the fewer ones, not the entirety of the audience. Also, I find that everyone loves breakout rooms through, especially without direction. Lots of people drop after the point where you announce it is an activity. They may not have been prepared to get involved in that way. Well, for that, probably improving the actual invitation to the meeting, letting people know exactly what is the expected 
engagement level uh, that the, it is required for them to participate. So we, we talk a little bit on that on, on the team facilitation course, how, how important it is to align expectations before even the meeting starts. And Karen said that a recent meeting used breakout rules effectively using pretty fine tasks to focus each group's attention and time. Thank you for sharing that, Karen. Giving a, a specific focus and time for stuff may, may also help. So this brings to pillar number three, make it participative. As I said, I call them the three Ps for a reason. First one is professional, second one is performative, and the number three is participative. These are my three main takeaways out of the three years of online experience. Now, as I said, I, I mentioned that I wanted to give a, a preview of, of the e-course that is going to be uh, launched on the 26th of April, this month. And then there's the first module, which is divided into three modules. It is a self-paced e-course with roughly one hour and a half duration, uh, but the videos are no more than three minutes because we know that with all the meetings you have, it's probably going to get quite difficult <laughs> for, for you to watch a one hour and a half video. So I split them up into three minutes longs. And the first module is going to talk exactly about pillar number one, looking and sounding professional. This will cover do it yourself on the budget and even high end solutions for the people who would like to invest. Tooling, setup, which camera to have, which microphone to use, how to broadcast and do things that I'm doing now, having multiple scenes with timers, playing music, anything that I have been using on my online training and facilitation, I'm going to share with you on the course on how to do it. Module two, which will be launched on the 26th of June, so one month later, will be actually focused on pillar number two. So how to really learn storytelling, voice projection, how to actually change the energy that you transmit in an online meeting session. I thought it was not possible to actually transmit a different energy because we are not in the same room, but my three years experience have shown me otherwise. And finally, module three is about designing and structuring a session with over 50 activities for the different phases that you will have on an online meeting. It's going to have the the demos of the activities, the step-by-step -step process, the things to look out for, and module three will be launched another in two months oh, a period of time, so 26th of July, giving you time to really sink in the different modules. Now, Jude thankfully shared a link with you all on the chat. So if you're interested to know more, just head to the link and add your name and, and info to know when the course is launched. And this is what I had to share with you all. Now, Q&A time. Let me check Slido and see if there is anything that you um, still haven't asked on the chat or also that I replied. There's also a checklist download free for you so that you can start checking for the three pillars on the meetings you facilitate. All right, Slido then. While I open Slido, if anyone would like to ask anything again, um, so that I don't waste any time lo looking, going over all the chat because there's a lot of messages and we can cover some, some things, please just open the microphone or write again on the chat so that we can talk about it. What are your questions regarding online meeting facilitation? 
Okay, so I have any advice for someone who has their second screen above their laptop? Well, my advice would be to change the location of your screen and your camera. So your bigger screen should be where the participants are and your camera should be on top of that bigger screen. Your secondary screen would be on the content or at the slide deck that you are using. Because for me, in an online meeting, the participants are more important than the content you share or the slides you share or the tools you use. Hopefully, they are going to be using them more than you, so you don't need to worry about that. You may glance at the content or the tools or mural from time to time to check if people are actually able to access or work on, but more focused on the participants. It would be really easy for you to disengage from me if I present this webinar like this, not even looking you in the eyes. We naturally strive for this eye contact and connection, okay? How important is humor? Well, this is an entire section on module two of the course. And I'm even going to have a special guest called David Lowe, who is doing a doctorship on humor and professional coaching. So I, I, I wanted a, a specialist on humor. Doesn't mean that he's funny. Don't tell him that I found him funny, please. But we are going to talk about it. For me, in life in general, humor is a necessity. So this is why I, sometimes during a meeting I do stuff like this, or I just talk in a really powerful voice trying to get people attention. Or even start singing, do you believe in life after life? It doesn't matter what you do. I think humor is a personal touch. You have to find what is your style of, of humor, but definitely something to, to add to online uh, sessions. Another question, is there a way to adjust the camera zoom? Most laptops don't seem to do this. If your native camera from your laptop does not allow this, and integrated cameras have a problem, which is you cannot easily change their positioning unless you change the positioning of the laptop. So my recommendation would be, first, how is your audio? Remember, audio trumps video. Your video may not be as good, but if your audio is terrible, improve that first. Then after that, look for web cameras alternatives. On module one of the course, I'm gonna talk about the different types of cameras, the different prices of cameras also, how to do some improvements on a cheap camera, if possible, if the hardware permits so, because I have been going through there. In the beginning of the module, I'm gonna share my own spreadsheet with everything I bought ever since the pandemic start. And I'm gonna share the, the order of the things that I bought that I believe are more important than the others. So you have also the links. If you want to buy the same gear as I, I'm also provide alternatives if you don't want to buy the same on different price ranges, because it is a world out there. For example, in the beginning of the pandemic, the only standing desk I could find, a desk that you could stand or, or sit down, in my country was from Ikea. Now, because of the whole remote world transformation, you go to, for example, Amazon, and there are 50 different brands. So there is a lot of material available there. But what is the best one for your room? What is the best one for your voice? What is the cheap one that will still provide value? Well, this is what I talk about over the course, okay? Now, how are you jumping between videos, timers like this, or the slides? Well, this is also what I think about adding this performancy or performative act effect to your audiences. There are plenty of tools available out there. I use one called OBS Studio. It's open source, it's free. 
but at the same time, it can become a nightmare to set up. So again, I spent three years playing with it. I haven't shared to everyone, or at least not in this call, but I have 15 years of experience as a software developer. So I like this technical stuff. Not everyone likes that. So someone without experience, you install OBS and you're just going to see a lot of menus, a lot of technical jargon, and it may not be for you. There are other alternatives who are simpler, but in module one of the course, I'm going to talk about OBS Studio because if you have, we thought we would share my setup, my profile with my scenes uh, configuration, you just need to open and run, and you will be able to do this switching at the click of a button, okay? So this is how I'm doing it, using OBS Studio. You can Google for it, install it, and try it out if you would like. Uh, if you have any questions, also reach out to me, and I will try to help you with that also. Hanyu can ask the participants to turn on the camera in a nice manner. Please, could you turn your camera? Just joking. These are things that you also need to align on the expectations before coming to the session. And on, a, on our facilitation course, we say that facilitation or on meeting hosting is not a silver bullet. Sometimes they have a valid reason, even if it's their feelings, they don't feel safe sharing their camera. They are not well-dressed. They don't have a good camera or they are ashamed of their house. Who knows? This is not something that you talk about in the session. You have a conversation with them outside, trying to understand them better before asking that. If someone, I had someone who said, I have a, um, a disability that does not allow me to sit straight, so therefore I cannot turn on my camera. Am I going to force that person to turn their camera on? It's gonna break something that we call psychological safety, so we don't want to do that. Camera on and off for participants. I've talked about this before. This is covered more on module three when we talk about the activities and etc. What about hybrid meetings? There, those are much harder, I believe. Top tips on how to include everyone. Well, first tip is don't do them. Hybrid meetings are a completely different game. It would take an experienced facilitator online and an experienced facilitator in person to make them successful. And hopefully they are two different people that work well together. So this is my tip for hybrid meetings. You have a facilitator in the room, you have a facilitator for the online people, and you're collaborating constantly with that other facilitator. Because otherwise, if you pay too much attention to the in-person group, the online people will disconnect. If you pay too much attention to the online people, the in-person people will disconnect. So ideally, you would get everyone to dial in remotely, but we know that some companies are imposing hybrid meetings nowadays. So have two facilitators, because otherwise it's going to be super difficult. If you only have one facilitator, and unfortunately that poor soul is you, well, I just wish you all the luck. I would love to see you on my online meeting course. Maybe I can even add a dedicated hybrid meetings section for that on module three. And, and Godspeed. May the fourth be with you, okay? All right. I don't see any other questions on the Q&A. I don't know if anyone else would like to ask anything. We are over time, at least 10 minutes. So I don't want to hold you here because then I'm going to be falling to the sins I have mentioned before, people disengaging and just doing something else and thinking about lunch and etc. So final ticket for questions, if anyone would like to chip in. Thank you too, Paula. Well, I think that's a wrap. Good. I think it's time to kick off the, the music again. Thank you, everyone who was present. And hope to see you somewhere in the online world or in person. 
Okay, I'm in Lisbon. If you ever come here, let's go surfing together. I would love that. And have a nice rest of the day, everyone. People that I know, people I don't know yet. It was a pleasure to have you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Just going to stay here dancing. <laughs>